Let, let me switch gears here and talk a little, you know, propose a topic about um, a lot of times the questions asked, how, can design have a seat at the business table? Um, but uh, from talking to many of you, it seems that you have a different perspective, which is more proactive, that you're making your own tables and you're inviting the business to engage. Um, I know, Phil, you have a strong point of view on that. And Dane, you've been doing some really interesting things with your group as well. One of the greatest things that we found was um, when we would audit all the designers, they were 110% allocated on what we're currently building. No one was articulating the future. So we learned from Hollywood, and we actually created a pre-vis group uh, to allow the business to pre-visualize the future. What was helpful in that is it allowed business leaders to talk on experiential terms. We realized that when they would come together and make decisions on spreadsheets alone or on other tangibles, what was lost was the empathetic future of the customer. And so by putting things into even narrative terms, they were more equipped to make better decisions. So for us, it's been more of a proactive stance to say, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And just by creating an affordance of time for the designer to do that, it made a huge difference. So by running this group like an agency inside the company, where we were the only client, it gave a lot of exposure inside uh, to allow those conversations to happen. So in a sense, creating the table. My comment was just going to be like, there shouldn't be a table involved. <laughs> like, nothing really interesting happens around a conference table. There's conversations about other people doing interesting things. Um, but, you know, my team always laughs because when, you know, we tend to move around in the campus a lot. And whenever our conference room gets moved, the first thing I do is I ask facilities to remove the conference table. <laughs> because it just is an inhibitor to collaboration and like interesting conversation. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double down on that. I, I, there's a, I don't know, for whatever reason, for the past you know, 20 years, I've, I've sensed this fixation in the industry to get the seat at the business table, right? I mean, I mean we've, we've kind of pined for that for, I think, a, a long time. And I think there's great value in that. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's uh, either or, or you, you can or you shouldn't uh, proposition. I do think actually you should understand why you want the seat at the table, and then also, frankly, um, when you're at the table, what should your behavior be? I coach a lot of teams around, you know, once you're at the business table, you're not there just as a designer. Your unique point of view is about bringing the design conversation to the heart of the business, but you should understand the business, and you shouldn't wait for the design conversation <coughs> to then start to suddenly lean in. Unfortunately, I've seen too many designers miss the opportunity to influence a total or bigger business proposition because they've kind of waited. And so, unfortunately, their seat becomes one where then the business leaders walk away from the table and say, well, why did I have the designer at the table, right? So I encourage people to and teams to understand why they want to go sit there. And when they're there, what frankly looks like really um, con contributing behaviors and discussions to the business president or whatever that might be. But I also encourage the, the design teams to say, to go build your own table and attract the business to you. <laughs> so um, to not constantly be thinking that the table that I want is over there somewhere, but that you actually can create the environment and the construct by which to bring the team to you. One of the smartest things that we did um, at P&G when we were really trying to drive design into the heart of our businesses was we created design studios out in the individual businesses rather than having a centralized force. Now you can do that once you get critical mass and you've got 300 or so people and you can kind of divide them up and put them out in the individual business locations. But the first reaction when we built these really cool studios for our designers were, I mean, everyone else was frankly kind of pissed. They're like, why do they get these really cool spaces and I have to go over here and work in this dull, drab environment, which was perfect, right? Because you do, you set your high table up and everyone would want to come in and work with the design team. Um, and so suddenly you're not just having design conversations in the design studio, you're having business and brand discussions. And so um, I often love coaching teams on making sure that they understand why they want to go sit at the business table to not lose their discussion or their kind of unique point of view as a designer. But that is not the end all be all goal for you, that also creating your own place where people can come and frankly, utilize design thinking and different things that you mentioned um, to kind of solve the larger business thing is also a very admirable, if not necessary, task. So, 
I almost wonder if maybe a, a, a possible end game is the, the, the greatest trick that designers could ever do is convince the world that they don't exist. In other words, could we um, sit at the, the business table and, and, and approach designing from a problem-solving perspective such that, that those tools that we use, you know, uh, empathy, understanding people, um, you know, really sort of drawing out needs and, and, and coming up with solutions, could those tools then be shared and ultimately absorbed by the, pe the, the business people at the table such that they become the designers and it's almost like we give up design techniques or we just give up design to, to, to people who are not designers anymore, right? Wouldn't that be an interesting place for, for business to go and that, and that the designers are there just like anyone else to help solve a, you know, a particular business problem, which is true, that's what, that's what we're there for. But, um, but I think that would be an interesting sort of perspective is to get people to think about design in a way that is sort of very natural and just mm. the way they work.